My name is Stephen Conville, and I am CEO of Chronic Relief Group. We are a late stage commercial LP applicant in Canada um, in the midst of construction and we are the holder of seven conditional licenses in the country of Jamaica. Uh, Jamaica will be building a 225,000 square foot facility capable of producing approximately 50 metric tons of cannabis per year and we will be uh, constructing a 40,000 square foot facility in Metro Toronto. So I'm Stephen, nice to meet you and thank you for coming. So the topic that I have been given today is the business of cannabis. And uh, I'm an unconventional cannabis CEO, so I figure I'm going to give you an unconventional perspective on the business of cannabis. And on top of that, I guess we'll have an opportunity for question and answer. We might even make it kind of like a fireside chat. So I don't see any fire. But we are more than welcome to chat together. So I'm going to start this off with a topic that's very near and dear to me, and that is my mother. My mother uh, left this earth, uh, passed away just a little over three years ago. And if I knew 10 years ago what I know now, the last seven years of her life would have been tremendously more different. Her pain management would have been different. Her comfort would have been different. Her ability to sleep would have been different. And her ability to, in the final stages of her life, be able to know and understand and communicate with her loved ones would have lot been a lot more different. I'm going to leave the scientists to the curing of the ailments and afflictions that my mother suffered from, but suffice it to say, to me, that is going to be the real business that comes out of cannabis. I don't want to offend anyone or uh, impact uh, anybody's moral or legal sensibilities but when people talk about the new business of cannabis it's kind of a controversial topic in my mind seeing that Canadians smoke more weed per capita than any country on this earth and seeing that especially in the province of Ontario there's not a store right now that you can buy cannabis it would seem to me that if we're smoking the most weed per capita in the world, that there's already a cannabis business. It's just an unregulated cannabis business. And so therefore, as a cannabis producer in the future, I don't think I'll be doing justice to this talk if I'm gonna to talk to you about how to sell cannabis. That's not really exciting and to be honest Canadians have been buying and selling cannabis at a greater rate than any human beings on this earth so I don't think I have much to add to that. But what I do want to talk to you about in the business of cannabis is reflecting back to my mother. For those who can afford it and for what our healthcare system will pay for. To me, that's the exciting future. That is where I think that cannabis is going to be 
an amazing new business. And the reason why I say new business is there's a lot of people who have been through anecdotal sciences treating those who suffer from ailments and pain and disease and, and uh, PTSD and insomnia and there's all kinds of things that people are anecdotally treating people for. However, when we think about um, a new business, a business of cannabis, I would really like to encourage you to open your minds to think about the possibilities. What may be? So together, um, if you are suffering from arthritis, chronic pain, what would you not do to be able to make that go away? The anecdotal stories are unbelievable and that's why to me I'm so passionate about it. I have some friends who are Italian who their Nona is the most important person in the family. She's the matriarch and part of the family relationship centers around her cooking, her baking. But she's been unable to bake for the last three years. And lo and behold, she's discovered some cannabis creams, some cannabis ointments. Now, everybody knows that since Cheech and Chong or Bob Marley, everyone's been smoking weed to get high. Shout out to Chong and Cheech and Bob. But um, what's truly impressive is through cannabis creams that have not yet been produced through the greatest scientists on earth. After a week of using the creams, Nona's back. She's able to cook and she's able to bake and the entire dynamic of that family has changed. It's gone from one of, of frustration and sadness to happiness. And I might say it's without pharmaceutical grade heroin. There's no Oxycontin, there's no Percocets, there's no hard drugs that are destroying her insides while maybe getting her to a situation where she might need to start selling her family furniture to feed her addicts, addictions. She's actually just baking, cooking, and the family is whole. And to me, that is one of the most exciting parts of what's to come with cannabis. Bringing families back together, reducing pain, healing injury without the toxicity of some of the hard pharmaceutical drugs. And to me, that's a big, big business. Other things that I wanna to talk to you about, just up here in my zany, crazy mind, is other ancillary businesses that might pop out of, not the existing industry, but this new industry. Think for a moment about engineering. We are moving from guys growing cannabis in their basement, guys growing cannabis in their forests, women growing cannabis in, in clandestine locations and running from the police trying to make a living to commercial cannabis organizations where there are taxes to be paid and there's a tremendous amount of capital to be made. Well think for a moment as an engineer. One of the key components to growing cannabis indoors is cooling. But air conditioners are not designed for cannabis. Air conditioners draw a tremendous amount of power. And here we are in the Green Living Show. But think about it. 
Air conditioners draw a tremendous amount of power, but cooling is essential to growing excellent cannabis. Now the guys who are growing cannabis illegally, they're having to hook up their air conditioners and hide them from the, the powers that be. But the new cannabis industry, things are gonna be hooked up, meters are gonna be there, and people are gonna be aware of how much power you're drawing. And it's at this point in time for our engineers that there are great opportunities to actually design equipment for the cannabis industry. Because if you're in America, it's not legal to disclose, I'm making an air conditioner for cannabis. It's not legal to say I'm making these equipments. So they have these um, home and garden labels and all of these quirky things. But as this industry evolves, there's gonna be great opportunities. I see some young men up here and I'm hoping that they wanna go into the sciences and maybe um, work on constructing equipment, equipment that's viable for this industry. Another option that I wanna to talk to you about is potentially a trim machine. It might seem simple, but trim machines are designed for five crops a year. And they give you a 10 year warranty and they're rated for 2,000 hours. But now that we're into legal cannabis, you're gonna be in a situation where after nine months, those trim machines have gone through their lifetime because they're designed for a guy who's running around sneaking in the forest and is only able to crop five times a year. Soon there are gonna be organizations that crop 52 times a year and are aggressive in their production. And so, there's a tremendous opportunity for cannabis equipment. Now, I want to talk to you about the two buzzwords, THC and CBD. For many years, we've been told THC bad, and now we've started to hear CBD good. And I don't think that's the appropriate way to look at it. Because when you look at THC, yes, THC has a psychoactive component and it can and will often make people high. But let's think about an antihistamine for a second. Let's think about Allegra, Anybody take Allegra? Nobody takes Allegra because it doesn't work. And that's the point. Everybody takes Allegra D. And the reason why you take Allegra D because Allegra D has pseudoephedrine in it. And that pseudoephedrine makes the Allegra effective. And guess what? That will get you high. If you take Neocitrin, there's the one that works and there's the one that doesn't. And the one that works gets you high. And I want that to kind of resonate in your mind out there because I don't think necessarily we actually think about cannabis in this way. And that's why I say there's a new business for cannabis. The question is not about whether I got high or I didn't get high. The question is how much TXC is actually effective to treat my needs? And I think that's the appropriate question because right now people are talking about CBD and how fantastic CBD is. But many people don't know that CBD is only 40 to 60% as effective without THC present. And that, to me, is where the business opportunities lie. How much THC activates the CBD for optimal medical treatment? Those are some deep questions. I don't have those deep answers. 
But I do see that being part of the illustrious future of cannabis. In the genetics, and this is really something that's near and dear to me, there was a just say no movement in the 80s. So in the era of Bob Marley and Cheech and Chong, if you got caught smoking some cannabis, they look at you like, you degenerate, you bum. You're gonna be lazy and you're gonna amount to nothing. And maybe that's true. But 10 years later, there was a stark change. Somehow cannabis became a schedule one narcotic. Cocaine is only a schedule two narcotic. So how did cannabis become a schedule one narcotic? I'm not gonna get into the geopolitical blah, blah, blah that created that. But what I'm saying is, is that the war on drugs that targeted cannabis put a lot of people in jail and pushed scientists and medical experts away from researching the wonders of this amazing plant. So I kind of want to pause here and say to you, well, wonders? What do you mean, how so? So let's take CBD. Now I'm not a scientist. I'm a businessman. I'm a stockbroker by trade. I'm an MBA in finance. And you know what? Biology class made me squeamish. You cut a frog in front of me, I freak out. I get emotional. So I wasn't good at science, okay? Maybe I had the aptitude to do it, so I'm not speaking as a scientist. I'm speaking as someone who knows about cannabis. In business, there's something called the efficient frontier. And that is a risk reward ratio. So when the war on drugs took place, and they elected to put people in situations where they could get a hundred years in prison when previously they could get a ticket and a lecture. What that did was it forced the industry into a new paradigm, which is profit for this level of risk that I'm gonna take. And unfortunately, the corollary of that is that the higher the high, the higher the price. Now again, I'm not a scientist, so I'm not trying to tell you that I know this empirically for true, but I know it in my heart, is that the relationship between THC going up brought CBD down. So unfortunately, Inadvertently, we have bred out the more medicinal components of cannabis for the more recreational components of cannabis. Now, yes, THC has some tremendous medical benefits, and it will be one of the areas that leads us to future cures. But by breeding up the THC and breeding down the CBD, we took some of the greatest components of the cannabis plant and we reduced their efficacy. So, where do I see the new business? New business in genetics. New businesses in breeding. Because right now, one of the main sources of CBD is industrial hemp. And I love CBD and I love industrial hemp. But unfortunately, pure CBD does not possess the wonders 
of the entire cannabis plant. And so once we get away from which weed is gonna get me the most stone, man, and I'm gonna buy that weed, which to me I think is yesterday's business because all it is is about converting. Like I don't think if Canadians smoke more weed per capita in the world, that legalization is gonna make us smoke more weed. We're already smoking the most. There might be a 5% lift, but really what legalization is about is converting those weed smokers into regulated weed smokers. So we're taking an existing business and we're converting it. But that new business to me, the real excitement is where we get back to our genetic roots. I could go on for hours about the endocannabinoid system and how that's gonna help us in the future. And that's another amazing new business. But I think what I'm gonna do at this time is just wind it down and open the floor to questions so we can have that fireside chat. So just like Ronald and Nancy Reagan said, just say no, I'm gonna end it off with cannabis and its future business, especially the medical side of it, and say, just say yes. So I'm Stephen Conville. Thank you very much, and let's have some questions.